and hello YouTube, this is GS Man of Smart, and I'm going to tell you a brand new video for Tutorials with GS. Now today's tutorial, we're going to take a look at GIMP and how to create this awesome photo print effect. It's a really cool effect, it's very easy to do, but it looks really cool and we're going to do a lot of neat little things that sort of make it different from the ordinary, regular photo print effect, which is even easier to do, so it's... It's a little better than the original. You'll see here, I did it on three different pictures here and have like a little wooden uh, texture in the background. If we zoom in, you see we have a drop shadow going on here. We have the uh, photo print background here. We have a slight glare at the bottom uh, right corner and we have a uh, slight darkened area on the top left corner. So we're showing you how to do that and how to make these realistic looking prints very easily on GIMP. So first thing you wanna do is go and open your image I'm gonna go ahead and open a random image I found on the internet. So there it is. All you want to do is go to File, Open, and open your image. Now, if your images look sort of like far too large, you can always resize them. I'm going to resize this one because um, it, it, it does seem a little too too much in height. I'm gonna go ahead and go 800, 800, and I'm gonna go ahead and use my uh, resize scale tool here. What is the crop tool? Actually, it's the crop tool. I'm going to try to get a 450 uh, because 450 is what I have the other pictures as. And if we can't get 450, 460 is fine too. There we go, 450. So like that, that's a nice photo print size there. If you want to resize it, you can resize it. If not, you don't need to do any of this. But the first step you want to do is go to filters and filters is right here. I'm gonna add a border, so find decor, which is right here. Click add border. And now depending on your size of the image, if you have a very large picture, you may wanna have a larger X and Y size. But um, for smaller images, you may wanna have a, a smaller one. Just try out different sizes. I like 10. Have your data value on color set to one. And um, F2, F2, F2 is like this, this darkened white that makes it look like a photo print. Go ahead and use that, press OK, and just press OK, and you'll see we have the border around now. Now, next thing we wanna do is create two transparent layers. So at the bottom right here, um, bottom left corner of the layers panel here, go ahead and click the new layer, make sure transparency is selected, leave everything else the same, press OK, and then do it one more time because we need two of them like that. Now for one of these layers, you wanna use a white foreground color and use your blend tool or the gradient tool and make sure you have foreground to background selected here, which is this one, actually foreground to transparent here. Foreground to transparent is what you wanna have. You can change it by pressing the uh, blend selection here and make sure you're on linear. And then what you wanna do is sort of at the bottom right corner of the image, just go ahead and diagonally draw towards the center and this will be your glare. Now, depending on how you want it to look, you can make it smaller, you can make it larger. Uh, I try to tend to find one that goes about three-fourths of the way to the top. I don't like that one. Hmm. Can take a few goes, but once you find a glare that you like, there you go, I think that, that glare is fine. You'll be good to go. Now on the second, uh, the top layer here, the second transparent layer we made, you want to go ahead and change your foreground color to black again. So click this little double arrows here on the left side on your tools panel. And you should see that your foreground to uh, transparent is now black, it's no longer white. Keep everything in the blend options the same, keep the same uh, mode, keep the same linear, keep everything the same. But instead of the bottom right corner, this time we're going to go to the top left corner. And same thing, you want to go ahead and press, click on the edge, and sort of draw towards the center. Uh, once again, up to your preference how much you want this to be darkened. I don't like to have it too darkened, but a little under half of the image I like to go because it looks fairly good. Something like that, that's good. Now with these two transparent layers, you wanna set the glare, which is the bottom right white, to about negative 30, negative 40, negative 50, well not negative, 30, 40, or 50 basically. Um, you can once again play around these settings if you don't like the opacity you can always change it I've grown to like 40 so I'm using 40 you could use any other value though but I wouldn't go too high and I wouldn't go too low otherwise you can barely see it and then for the black here I like to go anywhere from 10 to 20 
So I'm going to be using 15. And that will give that uh, dark shadow there at the top left corner. And our glare at the bottom right. Now after you've done that, you want to go up to Image and click Flatten Image. Now actually, hmm, I think Merge Visible Layers, but essentially the same thing. But click Merge Visible Layers instead. Merge Visible Layers and just have Expand as necessary selected and merge within active group only selected and have uh, discard invisible layers unselected and then go ahead and press merge this should basically merge all of your layers into one finished layer as you can work with it now from here on you want to right click the layer and click duplicate so we have a double of that and we want to create a um, well not yet so from here on, what we want to do is go up to Canvas, Image, Canvas Size. So the top, Image, then Canvas Size. And here we want to add, once again, depending on how large your image is, if your image is larger than mine, if it's larger than 850 by 450, I mean 800 by 450, you may want to add more. I'm going to be adding 150 pixels to the width. Um, you know, depending on how large your image is, make sure this is linked up together, so width and height change. But I'm gonna be adding 150, so that'll make this 950. Essentially, it doesn't matter too much of how, how big or how small you make this, because worst case scenario, if the drop shadow that we're, about, that we're gonna add in just a few seconds goes off of the image, you can always paste it onto a new image. So don't worry about this too much, just sort of try to guess uh, depending on what I have and what you have and then once you've pressed enter here your height will automatically adjust its pixels as well just go ahead and press center here and this will center your image in the canvas and then click resize and what you'll see is that we now have a extended canvas size after that we have a duplicate and we have our original layer make sure you create another layer so we at the bottom create a new layer make sure this one's transparent as well press ok and make sure this one is at the very bottom. Now from here, go and grab your bucket tool on the left corner here. Change your foreground color to white, like this. You can always use these double arrows to change between white and black. And with the bucket tool selected, make sure your transparent layer at the bottom is selected. Press the background and everything will turn white, which is exactly what we need. Now to create a drop shadow, we want to create a unique drop shadow. You could create a drop shadow like this and it'll basically be a giant square drop shadow around the entire image. But we want to make it look a little more realistic. So what we're going to do is select the middle layer, which is the original the original layer here, and uh, go up to Filters, find Distort. Uh, distort would be right here. And find Lens Distortion. Now, uh, copy these values down. You want to have for Main, 4. For Edge, negative 20. For Zoom, negative 10. And then for Brightness, X shift and Y shift zero. These are the best settings that I found. Uh, well, you can change these if you'd like, but I like these settings. You can play around with them, of course. The best thing about designing in GIMP is you have the ability to do whatever you like. So feel free to change the settings if you like. After that, go and press OK. And if we hide the top layer here with the little eyeball here, you'll see that our image has basically transformed into this which is what we want to create the drop shadow. So make sure you have the middle layer selected where we have applied the distortion to, then go up to filters, lights and shadows, and drop shadow. And once again here, it, it's really up to your preference again. Uh, your offset X and your offset Y will basically be where the shadow will be pointing towards. Uh, y is up and down, X is left and right. Uh, you generally wanna have these the same number if you want to use 8 and 8, that's completely fine. You'll see the difference. The higher these numbers are, the larger your shadow will be. The lower these numbers are, the smaller your shadow will be. The uh, blur radius will just uh, define uh, how much the shadow is blurred. If you want to have a larger blur or a smaller blur, generally 15 is always fine. You don't need to worry about that. Color black, obviously, and opacity is how opaque you want the shadow to be. 80 tends to be fairly well. You can put it to 75 or to 85, but I like 80. And uh, allow resizing is always good. And then press OK. And you'll see that we get uh, this drop shadow right here, but we don't wanna have the sides here. So what we're gonna do is actually delete this layer now. We don't need this layer anymore, so delete it. 
and then go ahead and make the top layer visible again and you'll see we're actually covering up the sides here and this shadow looks a lot more realistic as if the photo is sort of uh, bended kind of and it's been you know it's gone through some looking and it's gone through some rummaging and moving around which, which makes it look a lot more realistic now after that what you want to do is uh, you can once again merge this down at the top layer the top layer is selected you can right click uh, merge down now be aware when you merge this down you can no longer change the opacity so uh, the next step is going to be the last step uh, what you can do what we're going to do is rotate the entire image next if you want to rotate each of these separately and you still want to play around with the opacity here uh, you can do that but if you if you like the opacity if you like how everything looks then just go ahead and right click the top layer click merge down and then this entire thing will be a layer and what you can then do is we don't need this bottom layer anymore because we, we can see our drop shadow here and you can cancel delete that one by the little trash can button here and now if you want to rotate this you can you don't need to rotate it but as you see in the in the little I know demo here that I have a little preview I rotated some of these this one I didn't rotate so if you want to do that go ahead and grab your rotate tool uh, right here and you can rotate this by any angle you'd like. And I think we're gonna go with that. And here's what I was talking about. Don't worry too much if you see that your image is going off of the canvas. Uh, the main reason why we changed the canvas is because if you're not making large rotations, then you'll basically, it'll fit in this canvas. Um, so it doesn't matter if, you, if, if it fits in this canvas, you're good to go. You can save the project and you basically have your effect done. If you get something like this, you can go ahead and press Control X or you can go up to edit and press cut and that will cut the entire layer here. Then go to edit, paste as new image and it will basically save um, as, it will copy the layer and save it on a new image canvas that has a proper size. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go over here Paste it in here, and um, let's see how we can uh, how we can make this look. Maybe something like that. No, not something like that. Something like that. There we go. And we'll go ahead and move this over here. But there you go. That's how you create a photo print effect. It looks really cool. It looks really nice. And you know, this is great for web design if you want to create like a little web design for your website, a little graphic, or anything really. Hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, any suggestions to make this even cooler, leave some comments in the uh, bottom in the comment box below. I'll definitely be replying to any of the comments you have, any confusions or questions you have. Plenty of other content on the channel about GIMP tutorials. You have a lot of GIMP tutorials on this channel. So if you're new to GIMP, if you want to learn more about GIMP, uh, definitely check the channel out. We have an entire playlist for it. More GIMP tutorials coming in the future as well, so I encourage you to subscribe. And uh, thank you for watching as always, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video helped you out in any way. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. It'll really help me out. If you didn't like it, you can leave a comment as well, giving some feedback. If you have any other comments or questions, please leave them in the comments as well, and I'll do my best to answer them. I usually respond to comments within 24 to 48 hours, depending on your question and depending on how busy I am. I have plenty of other content on my channel about different software tutorials and how-to videos, so if you're interested in that type of stuff, check it out. And if you like what you're seeing, you can subscribe too. Really appreciate it. You can also check out my other channels and social media as shown on the screen right now. And with that, thank you so much everyone. And this is GSMASMART, and I'll be back sooner than you think. Don't go anywhere.